What's going on everybody, Cigar Show Tim here with another edition of Tobacco Talk, where I review a cigar and then I give my thoughts on it in four key areas. Flavor, draw, construction, and burn. It's everything you want to know about that cigar, but it's from my palate's perspective, and then I rate it as to whether I think it's noteworthy or not. So the cigar for this review comes from Crown Heads. I picked it up at PCA this year, and I've been waiting for the right opportunity to check it out, and well, I think it's now. This is the newest release from Crown Heads. It was released and debuted at PCA 2023. This is the Crown Heads La Varetta. We'll get into the blend and the makeup and all of that in just a couple minutes here, but look at that beautiful primary band there, secondary band that says Crown Heads on it. Absolutely beautiful. But if we're gonna review it, we gotta stop looking at it, and there's only one thing left to do. <laughs> Let's light it up. Okay, if we take a look here at the La Varetta, you can see the primary band there, absolutely beautiful. La Varetta, beautiful there with the L and the V that are interlaced to make the V. And you come down here to the foot band, you can see it says crown heads right there. Absolutely beautiful detail on that. This cigar features a wrapper that is from Jalapa, Nicaragua over a binder from Jalapa and fillers from the Dominican Republic and Nicaragua. And this cigar is made in the E.P. Carrillo factory down in the DR, Tabacalera La Alianza. And all tobacco for this are aged for at least three years. So let's check it out. All right, I went with my straight cut, as you saw just a second ago, but you can see right there the straight cut. I'm going to take off this foot band and see if it will be nice to me and come off easily. Let's see if it does. I am going to just peel it because I don't want to ruin the foot of the cigar. And when you peel it, it comes off nice and clean. Very good. So on the cold draw, I pick up flavors of dried fruit, a really pronounced honey sweetness, uh, and then there's just a little bit of a lighter woody note in there, some cedar note. So let's get this thing toasted up. All right, upon initial light up, I'm picking up quite a few different flavor notes. Uh, pretty diverse as well. So I'm getting some white mixed with black pepper. The black pepper is a little more on the palate. The white pepper is more through the retrohale. There's definitely some very pronounced cedar woodiness that's in there as well. There's a little bit of some sweetness that's in there still. I'm not gonna say that it's the honey sweetness that I got on the cold draw, but there's definitely some sweetness that's in there. And then maybe it's a little bit more of like a brown sugar kind of note in there. Really interesting, really, really curious about this and how it progresses and moves forward. But I'm gonna jump in the first third. When I come back, I'll let you know a little bit more about the cigar, the price point on this, what sets La Varetta apart from the other blends when it comes to price point, and well, anything else that I think you might need to know. All right, let me show you the burn here at the end of the first third. As you can see here, sitting on my cigar rest, here is the cigar, it is doing quite well. You can see the burn has got just a little bit of a wave to it, not doing terribly bad, but it does have a hint of a minuscule wave to it. Nice mascara line on it. You can see the ash is just stacking dimes. And you can see here in the ashtray, when I first broke off the ash, it came off in a nice solid chunk and did quite well. Okay, flavor notes in this first third. So the woodiness that was there that was most prominent right there at first light up has gone to much further in the background to the long finish. The black pepper has tamed down a little bit. The white pepper is completely gone. It's just a black pepper that's on the palate and a little bit in the retrohale. It is not crazy spicy whatsoever, but it is expected with so much Nicaraguan tobacco in this blend here. And then there's a really, really good creamy note that is in the cigar that mixed with the long finish of the cedar with that uh, black pepper spice is very, very good. The draw on this has no problems whatsoever. You just saw the burn. Everything is doing very well on it. I would say the strength on this is probably a medium minus at this point. Now let me talk about the different Vitolas that this is offered. This comes in four different Vitolas. There is a number 50, which is a five and three eighths by 50, but MSRP is for 1840 a cigar. Yes, 1840. A box of 20 will run you 368 bucks. There's a number 52, which is a six and a half by 52, which MSRP is for $19.60. There is a number 54, which is a five and five eighths by 54, which MSRP is for $20 and 60 cents a cigar. And then there is the uh, La Varetta number 56, which is a six and a quarter by 56. That is what I am having here. It's the six and a quarter by 56, so the number 56. And that MSRP is for $21 and 80 cents per cigar. So if you go from the number 50 
to the number 56. A box of number 50, like I said, is $368. A box of the number six will run you $436 MSRP. Now, why is this cigar so expensive? Why does it cost so much? Well, I interviewed John Huber at PCA. You can check out the video right up here if you want to. He does touch on La Verreta and the amount of time that went into it and working with Ernesto Perez Carrillo and going back and forth, finding the blend from the um, branding and the boxes and all those different things. But the wrapper on this is a Jalapa Nicaraguan uh, shade grown wrapper and that has a minimum of four years of age on it. So right there, you've got a long time of aging that tobacco before you can even roll the cigar. And then when you look at the binder and the filler, there is a whole nother um, aging bracket or you know another time frame of three years of age on the different tobaccos that are in there. But what really makes this at the price point it is, is the amount of pairs they have, cigar rollers, cigar pairs they have that are rolling these cigars. So they only have, if I'm not mistaken, they have only got, let me pull it up just to make sure I am accurate on it. They have only got a total of seven pairs that are rolling this cigar. So only seven people are trusted in rolling La Verreta in the EP Carrillo factory, and they ask them to slow down to 60% of their normal production speed. So when you look at that, you're losing 40% rolling speed in production and being able to produce them and get them out there plus you've only got seven people that are rolling them, you have to be able to account for that amount of labor and you have to be able to account for the amount of production time or production quantity and volume that you're missing out on. And so that is why this cigar is at the price point that it is at. Now, when I get to the end of the cigar, we'll see if I feel that this is worth the price point of the cigar, the one that I'm having again, $21.80, the number 56. Time will tell on that. But I'm gonna jump into the second third. When I come back, I'll let you know any changes or transitions in the flavor profile of the cigar, anything new that I have noticed about it, and well, anything else that I think you might need to know. All right, let me show you the burn here at the end of the second third, as you can see here, sitting in the ashtray. Pick it up. Right here, the burn. Got, again, just a hint of a minor, minor, minor wave to it. Nothing crazy whatsoever. Ash comes off in nice solid chunks in the ashtray, as you can see again. Okay, flavor notes in the second third. They continue to develop, and that cedar woodiness fell back quite a bit. The creamy note is absolutely in the forefront and followed up with a little bit of like a, a cocoa note kind of in there. It's a creamy chocolate uh, kind of note that's in there, which is really, really nice. There's still a little bit of that sweetness that was in there at the very beginning of the cigar. It's come back now. A um, little bit of like a, a brown sugar kind of sweet note that's in there. It's not super candy sweet, nothing like that whatsoever, but just a really, really savory second third. Have really enjoyed it. Draw stayed really nice on it. No problems there whatsoever. Strength, I would say this is a good solid medium strength cigar now. So doing really, really well. I've enjoyed it so far, but again, time will tell as to whether I think this is worth the price point that it is being suggested at the MSRP for this cigar. So I'm gonna jump into the final third. When I come back, I'll let you know whether I thought the flavor transitions changed at all, whether I thought it was you know, worth the price point, quite frankly, and whether or not I think this cigar is nubworthy or not. It's gonna be pretty interesting and challenging to prove that this is a nubworthy cigar because that means I'm gonna to wanna to smoke it again. And if I wanna smoke it again, that means it's gotta be worth the price point. So there's a couple different factors going into this one because of the price of this La Verreta that only time will tell. So I'm gonna wrap up this cigar. When I come back, I'll let you know all that information and anything else I think you might need to know, but here's to finishing the cigar. All right, let's wrap up the review on this cigar. So as we look down here in the ashtray, you can see that the cigar is down to the nub. Let me show you how it has done so far. So if you look here, you can see the burn is mostly straight. Wrapper split just a little bit right there, as you can see, but didn't take away from the experience at all. But overall has done well, and nice solid ash hold the entire time. Okay, flavor notes in the final third. The flavors pretty much changed completely. And in my opinion, they changed for the better as the cigar finished up. So the black pepper is still absolutely coating my palate. It is there. I didn't mention it, I don't think, in the last segment, but the pepper was just a mild black pepper. It has ramped up just a little bit. 
the Nicaraguan tobacco, you can definitely notice the spice that's in there. On the retrohale as well, there is some spice in there. It is nothing crazy, but it's there. And so the spice is there, the black pepper, but the uh, creamy note has absolutely stayed, but that came down just a little bit. And what is most prominent as this cigar wraps up is a nice creamy nuttiness. Very, very good, nice creamy note. I couldn't tell you exactly what kind of you know nut it is, but very nice creamy nuttiness is in there. Somewhere between an almond and a peanut is where my palate says it is, probably more like an almond than it is a peanut. And it is just really, really good. The black pepper spice mixed with the nuttiness has been a little bit interesting, but as it mellows out when you get past the initial draw and you go to the longer finish and you get the nuttiness with that creamy note, very, very good. There's a hint of that woodiness in there if you really look for it. Um, and that cocoa chocolate note has pretty much disappeared. It is just completely nuttiness and creaminess with that pepper and it is very, very good. Strength on this, I would say, as it wrapped up, is probably about a medium, medium plus, nothing too strong whatsoever. Draw has stayed nice the entire time. Plentiful smoke output, all of those different things have done very, very well. Now, do I think it's nubworthy? Well, I have to look and see, is this worth the $20 price point for this specific one that I have? And I'm gonna say it absolutely is nubworthy, and here's why I justify it. Because people go, oh, well, you're saying it just because you like crown heads or this and that. I'm not saying it just because it's crown heads and just because you know I like the cigars and all that. I'm saying it because in a cigar that has the wrapper that's been aged for four years, the other tobacco that's in has been aged for at least three years, the different time that goes into rolling it, the amount that they can produce because of only having the seven pairs that roll them, all those different things. This does not taste like a cigar that is young. It does not have any metallic, ammonia, none of those tastes that are harsh, there's no bitterness, nothing like that in this cigar says that it is young and that it is not ready to be smoked. This is absolutely ready to be smoked and I think this is very much worth the $20 price point. Now, you can go to the smaller Vitolas, you can go to the lesser price points, you know, whether it be the $18, the $16, whatever they may be, the $14 price point, entry level I think was $14.80. If you're one that isn't sure whether you want to make the jump and go to a $20 cigar, start at the smaller Vitolas. Start at the um, smaller one and go with the $14 price point. Start there and see if it's something that you like. I think this is something that if you are a Crown Heads fan, you are absolutely going to love. This is a cigar that is very good from the beginning all the way through, every single third down to the end, and it is very, very good. John, if you see this, you absolutely knocked this out of the park with Ernesto and with what you did and the time that it took and the intentionality that went behind it, very, very good cigar. So that's my take on it. It is absolutely nubworthy. Is it a steep price point? Yeah, it is. But if I wanted to find a cigar that I wanted to buy and have sort of a celebration or just you know something that I wanted to sit back and have a really good, nice cigar that was worth the price point compared to some of the big name brands and what you can spend for those, honestly, I would take this one time and time again. Very, very good cigar. But if you've had the Lavaretta from Crown Heads, put some comments down below. Did you get a similar experience to me? Did you get something different? What was the flavor notes? You know, through your experience, what was it like? Let me know. And if this is something that you've been waiting to see some reviews and you happily stumbled upon mine, uh, my review of this, then, well, let me know if this is something that you think you should try out, especially if you love Crown Heads. It's different than really anything I've had from Crown Heads before very very good and so i think you should go and check it out but that's going to do it for this edition of tobacco talk enjoy your cigar journey everybody i'm cigar show tim as always i'll see you